right. So, Angelica Gurule serves as the Environmental Services Division Manager for Los Alamos County, and she's been with them for the past five years. Thank you for being here tonight. Um, she is dedicated to zero waste initiatives such as recycling and composting and community outreach. And Helica obtained a Bachelor of Science in Environmental Science from the University of New Mexico and holds a Dual of Master in Sustainable Environmental Resource Management from the University of Malta and a Master's of Science in Information, Science and Technology from James Madison University. And Helica is also a National Certified Sustainable Resource Manager accredited through, accredited through Penn State University and was employed by Lanel for 10 years worked in human resources and the environmental stewardship office where her work was dedicated to pollution prevention, sustainability, and waste reduction. Um, and she was employed with the Department of Game and Fish, contributing to wildlife conservation. Um, we also have, oh, I'm gonna allow some other participants to enter now. We also have a guest speaker that will be joining us at the end of the talk. Sarah Pierpont, and I'll introduce her later on. Um, so, let's see. Okay, are we ready to start? Yep, go ahead. Okay, well, good evening, everyone. And I'd just like to thank Peak for facilitating this and Krista for all of your help and kindness walking me through this whole Zoom experience. Um, so I'm happy to be here tonight with everyone who's out there in the virtual world. I can't see anybody, but um, I want to just talk to you a little bit about um, the recycle program in Los Alamos County um, and give you a little bit of information on how to recycle better and, um, and just give you information on how we're recycling in our county. So I always like to say we're more than just a dump because a lot of people call the eco station and they'll say, is this the dump? Is the dump open? And I'm like, okay, well, the dump was closed in 2008 and we're now an eco station. It was constructed shortly after 2008 and we're proud of that name because, you know, we're eco-friendly and we do our best to keep things out of the landfill. Um, I always like to let residents know what's included in their monthly refuse um, services uh, because we do offer quite a bit of services. So we offer curbside trash collection, as most everyone knows, and also bi-weekly collection of recycle and yard trimming materials. Um, our residents are welcome to use the Eco Station, Overlook Convenience Center, the Lemon Lot, um, and then we also have a glass collection at the co-op. Um, we also offer 12 trash um, loads annually to our residents, which includes trash, tires, brush, household hazardous waste, electron or electronics, and then refrigerators. If you get a new one, you could take your old one to us. We recycle metal, uh, mixed recycle, cardboard, oil and antifreeze, light bulbs, batteries, and glass. And you're also welcome to pick up landscape materials like compost, mulch, and pellets. Um, for any uh, resident that is in need of assistance taking out your trash for whatever reason that may be, we do provide assisted refuse and recycling service. So we'll take your trash out to the curb, um, empty it, and then take it back to your garage or wherever you have it situated. And then we provide roll cart repair as well. Um, so trash, uh, there is no such thing as a way a lot of times, you know, people don't think about trash very much because it is just trash, but there is no such thing as a way. It actually is going somewhere and it's going to a landfill 90 miles away um, in Rio Rancho. Um, one thing that we do see the issue with about trash is a lot of people don't bag the trash. Um, so for sanitary reasons and also for litter control, it's really good to bag trash. Um, and then it has to be set out no later than 8 a.m. Good reminder, a lot of people are home now um, through this COVID pandemic. So, you know, they're um, it's just a good reminder to have it out by 8 a.m. Um, so last year we generated, we as the county residents, businesses, we generated uh, just a little over 16,000 tons of trash. Um, and that cost uh, about $700,000 
to haul it and to dispose of it. So it is very expensive to um, dispose of waste in our community just because we have to haul it so far. Um, so we do have bears and, and you know other wildlife so we have to be conscious about that and you know learn how to coexist and keep the animals safe as well as keep our residents safe. So we um, entered a partnership with New Mexico Department of Game and Fish and we have our bear tough roll carts which are grizzly bear tested and um, you know we have they were originally $200 and we have them for $77 at the eco station available to our residents. Um, a lot of people ask, why doesn't the county pick up trash every other week, you know, and pick up recycle every week? Well, it is a, it's a state rule that requires weekly collection of trash in populations over uh, 3,000 people. So we're going to get started and talk a little bit more about recycling. But before we do, uh, Krista helped me develop a little poll. Um, I'm going to ask you all to do a little recycling poll or pop quiz and no answer is right or wrong because throughout this presentation we're going to um, learn the correct answer so if you would take a few minutes and answer i think there's like six questions so so the first question is where do you put a greasy pizza box trash recycle bin or compost second question is should you bag recycled material yes no or sometimes and I do see some answers coming in. Can styrofoam be recycled? Yes, if it has a number one through seven, or no. Can glass be recycled in your blue roll cart? Yes, no, or only at designated drop-off locations. What should I do with plastic bags, wrap, or film? Um, and the answer options are trash, blue recycle roll cart, or recycle at locally, local grocery store. And the last question is, can batteries be recycled in the blue recycle cart? Yes, no, or take them to the eco station. So it looks like everyone submitted their answers. Okay. Um, I'm going to end the poll and I hope that the answers pop up for you guys to read. So please let me know in the chat window if you're able to see the answers. I um, much but I can read you the the answers where do you put a greasy pizza box um, everyone chose trash as the answer um, should okay. you bag so, yeah, so that one's a tricky one right so if you tear off the lid you can recycle the not greasy part um, but I mean, if you don't want to do that, then obviously the trash is where it would go because we can't recycle greasy pizza boxes um, or it can be composted. And some people might disagree with me. So it's all um, dependent on your compost bin. Okay. The next question. The next one, should you bag recycle material? 20% said yes, 50% said no, and 30% said sometimes. Okay, so yeah, so we want to keep our recycle material loose. And that's just because it's easier to sort at Friedman Recycle Center. They don't have to tear open every single bag that comes in. Um, yeah, that's the answer to that. All right, number three, can styrofoam, oh, I have a question. Let me go back. Shouldn't shredded paper be bagged? Question mark. Question mark, yes, for, that is absolutely correct. Only shredded paper should be bagged in a clear, some type of um, see-through bag, just because if you don't bag that, then it will not be recycled. It'll fall through the whole system okay. at our recycling center. So that's the only thing. So yes, that's why there was a sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, so perfect, thanks for asking that. Yeah, good question. Number three, can styrofoam be recycled? 10% said yes if it has number one through seven and 90% said no. So that's absolutely correct. Um, it cannot be recycled, even if it has a number, um, because the numbers only refer to plastic and not styrofoam. So styrofoam cannot be recycled. So good job guys and girls. <laughs> <laughs> number four, can glass be recycled in your blue roll cart? Um, 60% said no, 40% said only at designated drop-off locations. 
Yay! Only a designated drop-off location, so that's correct. Five. So, station, co-op, um, Lemon Law, or Overlook. Those are the four places it's accepted. Okay. And what should I do with plastic bags, the wrap or the film? You should throw them in the trash. 10% of the people answered that. Um, zero answered blue recycle roll cart. 90% answered recycle at lo local grocery store. Wow, you guys are so amazing. So you're absolutely right. Take them to Smith's or a local grocery store and they can be recycled there. So perfect. And the last one, can batteries be recycled in the blue recycle cart? 30% said no. And 70% said take them to the eco station. Um, yes, that's correct. All right, so I'm going to stop sharing the poll results. Good job, everyone. Thank you for participating. Okay, so on to the next slide. So obviously, you guys are really, really good um, recyclers. So I'm happy that you're here tonight. And hopefully you're teaching others as well to recycle. So let's keep going. Um, I can't move my present. There we go. So mixed recycle, as I mentioned, um, is sent to Albuquerque. Uh, this is our facility that we send all our recycle. It's called Friedman uh, Recycling Center. And on the left, you'll see a picture of them actually sorting the material that comes in every day. So they have the different, um, they look like trash bins situated nearby them. And that is an indicator for either, you know, metals or um, bigger plastics or things like that. So it looks like they're sorting uh, for paper in this one because paper is what's passing through. And then on the right, the bells are the finished bells that are being sold um, globally and domestically. So this is a guide for how to recycle right in Los Alamos. And if you don't have this magnet, um, you can call and we'll gladly send you one. So we recycle plastics one through seven, newspapers, magazines, books, envelopes, um, milk cartons, cardboard, aluminum cans, steel cans. Um, and then on the right are all the things that should never go into your recycle bin and cause contamination. And then as most of you knew, to send the glass down to um, one of the designated recycle centers. So aluminum cans, one really cool fact about aluminum is it can be recycled forever without losing its integrity. Um, so that makes it a really valuable commodity. And um, all it needs to be is empty and lightly rinsed. Uh, plastic containers one through seven are also recyclable. Um, and you see the little chasing arrows, that's the recycle symbol. So if you wonder like, well, how do I know if it's a one through seven? So you wanna find that symbol. Normally it's on the bottom of the bottle and you can find that with the number inside of it. And it'll, it's, it'll say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, a question we get all the time is, what do I do with my lid and my label? Do I take them off? Do I leave them on? Um, the rule of thumb is to leave them on. Um, and that would be the proper way to recycle it. And this has changed, I know, from um, in the past. So books are recyclable now that people are cleaning out their house. They're finding all these old books, magazines, phone books. Um, we'll gladly accept those. Let's see. And then recycle clean papers. So any newspapers, as you can see, the little A cart in there that's made out of, you know, the more paper type material. Uh, toilet paper, tissue rolls, envelopes, and then you see the shredded paper and it's in a bag. So you can put it in that type of bag or you can also put it in a clear um, like semi-translucent bag. That way they know what it is when they're sorting it at the at the processing plant. Is there another question? Yes, can you recycle hair conditioner bottles? Oh, good question, Julia. Um, so you can as long as it's rinsed, right? You want it to be, you know, rinsed and emptied. So you got to get that last bit of uh, conditioner out of there. And, um, okay, so we love cardboard, as you know, or, you know, they're calling it uh, the retail apocalypse because all everybody's shopping online nowadays. And um, 
they're depending on residents to recycle cardboard and to capture that cardboard. So we have separate recycle bins for cardboard um, located all around the community that are welcome for you to use. Um, there's some at the eight ice rink, at the county municipal building, North Mesa Ballfields, Lemon Law Overlook, Eco Station, and mostly all the fire stations. So if your roll cart gets too full, which mostly it is because it's full of boxes, you're welcome to take it to any of those places um, for free. Oops. I think I, I have a couple questions. Question. Lost. Sure. Okay. Um, where did we leave off? Can, can bits of metal like nails go into the blue bin? Can you recycle stock paper? And can you recycle containers that have a silver lining? Um, okay, so the silver lining in the, the containers, that's kind of like this. I think they're called um, Tetra Pak. They can be recycled and I have verified that with Friedman recently. That was a school's question as well. So those can be recycled. Um, and then the other question was nails Stop. in the metal bin. Those are so tiny. If you ever have a lot of nails you want to recycle, the better thing to do would be to bring them to the eco station and put them in our metal bin. Unless you're going to put the metal inside another metal container, they'll fall out and they'll fall through all the cracks at Friedman. So it'll end up as trash. So you, the best thing is bring it to the eco station and put it in our metal bin for free or put it inside another metal container and then put that in your recycle roll cart. So, and was there one more question? Stock paper? Stock Can paper, you... yes. So any type of paper, calendars, glossy paper, stock paper. Um, the only paper that is sometimes questionable is Christmas wrapping paper. And that's because it's so thin um, and there's often like glitter in it or um, other types of things that they don't want in their recycled paper at Friedman. So I hope that answered your question and we'll keep moving. So cardboard, very valuable commodity. We take it to a um, paper mill in Pruitt, New Mexico, which is a really huge win for New Mexico to have that um, recycling facility so closely. One question came in, I think. Okay, let's see. Does the wire need to be removed from spiral notebooks? No, but good question. So you don't have to, you don't have to do that. If it's like a binder full of paper, you want to just take that out because there is so much plastic in a binder. But otherwise, you don't have to worry about like little bits of the metal. So, okay, I'm going to keep moving. Is there one more question? Um, there are two. And if you would like to advise me on if you prefer I ask at the end or during the presentation, please let me know. But the two that just came through are, can you recycle coffee bags, which seem to have a plastic lining inside? And the second question, would magazines go with the paper recycle or with books if books are different? So that's the beauty about our program is it's a mixed recycle program. So you can throw all of these goods that we're talking about into your blue container. So you could put the paper, the aluminum, cardboard, um, the plastics, as long as they're clean, all of those can go into your blue bin. So that's, it's convenient and that's what's made our program so successful. Um, can you recycle all types of egg cartons? Um, if it has, if it has a chasing arrow that says one through seven or if it's made out of the paper, like the paper cardboard type stuff. Just not the styrofoam ones, because styrofoam is never recyclable in our program. Um, the only thing that can't go in your blue bin are plastic bags, the styrofoam, glass, and greasy pizza boxes. So I'm going to keep going um, just so I can zoom through, because I still have quite a bit of information for you all. Um, so I might answer your questions along the way. If not, then we'll gladly take them at the end. So glass recycling is um, recycled separately. It goes. It does not go into your blue recycle bin, but it's, you can take it to the lemon lot, to the co-op um, market, there's a bin outside, the eco station or overlook convenience center. Um, it just needs to be lightly rinsed. You do not have to remove any labels. Um, 
but you do need to remove the lids because they are metal lids and all we want is just pure, um, pure glass. So the cool thing about our glass program is it's, you could do any color, you don't have to separate it, but you can't do light bulbs or glass windows or ceramic cups, um, things like that, just glass bottles and jars. And we did find a program recently in Coors um, Wheat Ridge, Colorado. The Coors Miller plant is taking it and reprocessing it and using it for to remanufacture bottles for, um, for beer. So it's a really great end market. Um, so one thing we're really trying to address is our contamination. In the, in, in the United States, the contamination rate is set, uh, 30%. And in our state, it's only seven, or in Los Alamos, it's only 17%. So it is like an oops, but at the same time, we're doing really, really good. So I wanna thank our residents for doing such a great job and listening to things like this to help you um, learn how to recycle better. So these are some of the items that should not be in your recycle bin. So styrofoam cups, any type of styrofoam packaging, paper towels and napkins, plastic bags, uh, any brush, any food, Things like that should not go into your recycle bin. And believe it or not, we do see some of it. Um, so wish cycling. So what do you do? You want to recycle and you want to do the right thing. You want to do it right, right? So we say no wish cycling. So when in doubt, throw it out. If you don't know whether or not it should be recycled and don't have a time to call somebody and ask, and just throw it out because that, that helps reduce our contamination. Um, but I am gonna equip you with a new tool that we just launched. It's called Recycle Coach. Um, and this tool will help you um, to determine whether something is recyclable or not. So you can download Recycle Coach on the Apple Store or through Google Play. Um, so I'm gonna show you how to find it or you can visit the Environmental Services website if you don't wanna download the app. So you go onto Google and you search for Los Alamos County Environmental Services. And then this is our homepage, it'll take you here. And you can see it says that right on the top in the front of our middle of our homepage, you can, it has a search tool and it says, what goes where? And you can ask Milo, he's one of our little recycle coach, coachlings. And I just typed styrofoam because this is one of our top searched items, styrofoam and batteries. And it'll pull it up and it'll say if it can or can't be recycled. So styrofoam in this case is not accepted for recycling. Um, so it gives you that neat picture, but you can search for hundreds of items and it'll tell you how to recycle it. Um, so we're going to move on to another frequently asked question is what do I do with plastic bags? What do I do with their, you know, any of these plastics, the bubble wrap, the the produce wrap, my sandwich bag, as long as it's clean. Oh, let me give you a little tip. If, if it stretches, if you can push your fingers through the plastic, that is called a film or a wrap. Any of those plastics can go back to a retail grocery store as long as they're clean. So what I like to do is I, I just save it up and then I'll take it back um, you know, either to Walmart or to Smith's or whatever store that you like, um, you visit most often. Um, so that's a good idea for that. And it's any type of stretchy film. It's not just the grocery store bags. Um, okay, so we were talking about earlier, leave your recycling loose and free. So do not bag recyclables. Um, and on that, again, that just helps them to sort the material more quickly at Friedman and it won't end up in the trash. And the only exception is for shredded paper, right? So only shredded paper goes in a bag. Um, so recycle batteries at the eco station. Um, we wanna keep especially the lithium ion batteries and the nickel cadmium out of the recycle bin or even out of your trash because it's, um, they can cause fires, so. Bring them to the eco station. That's part of your service as a resident. So please bring them to us and we'll help you manage them. Um, flowers, right? Beautiful, but not recyclable. So do not put them in your recycle bin or, um, so the flowers can go in your compost bin or in your yard trimming bin. And then the wrap, where does that go? Trash. So 
Uh, let's see. So this is just a, a very cool little chart about how we're doing. Uh, how we're doing as a community in terms of recycling over the years, and I won't go into detail, um, but you can kind of, I want to touch on recycle, you can kind of see how it's flattened out these last couple of years. Um, 2017 was a peak and then it started to decline. And the industry says one of the biggest reasons that's happening is because of um, newspaper. Not as many people are reading the newspaper anymore. A lot of people are switching to the online service and therefore it's making our materials and our recycle bin lighter. And then they're also lightweighting materials. So plastic bottles and cans are much thinner than they were in the past. Um, so just some trends for you all to see. We'll go to 2019. Uh, we, we do recycle concrete and asphalt at the county, which is a, a great program for us. Um, and then it says compost, but it's really um, yard trimmings and a majority of those are composted as well, but not all of them at this point. Um, this is how you residents are doing. Here's a snapshot of what's happening at the curbside. Um, in March, we diverted 29% of our waste. So kudos to all of you. 14% um, of that was mixed recycle. 15% uh, of it was yard trimmings and 71% was trash. So I wanna let you know that your efforts are, are um, really great for the as well. And, you know, diverting all the brush into our yard trimming program, we um, reduced greenhouse gas emissions by 1,100 tons just in these past couple months. So great job. Um, as part of our yard trimming program and our recycle program, we started uh, introducing the alternating schedule. So one week's brush and one week's recycle. And that's another thing that can be handy in the recycle coach tool is um, you can type in your address and it'll populate um, a customized schedule for each and every one of you and give you, send you reminders of when to put out your recycle, when to put out your trash, and it just makes life a little bit easier, it sends a little reminder to you. Um, so here's what happens with our yard trimming program. You set your cart out on the curb, there's your little brown yard trimming cart, and then we pick it up, bring it to the eco station and dump it it's the top middle picture. We dump it on the ground and then we use that big yellow machine. It's called our grinder. We grind it all up and turn it into mulch. And that mulch, a good portion of it, I would say about a third of it is sent down to Bio Canyon um, to be composted with the biosolids. So you could see on the top right picture is a picture of the scarab and that's what's used to turn the windrows um, and, and aerate the piles. And then when it's finished and it's composted, we bring it back up to the eco station and the product is finished and ready for our residents to use. And all of our landscape prod, um, products like mulch or compost are free um, with a loading fee if you do need that assistance. And we also um, provide delivery service. So if you need a yard trimming uh, roll cart, you're welcome to call us at any time. And just a reminder, it's only for yard trimmings or landscape material. Um, so the yard trimming program, and just a reminder, is just for branches, flowers, grass clippings, pine needles, and pine cones. So should be no treated lumber, or railroad ties, um, concrete, ash, or dirt, and especially not plastic bags. We are seeing a little bit of that right now in the yard trimming program, so we'll keep educating um, as much as possible. So as a community, um, about 63% of our households have that, which is great for Los Alamos, it's a voluntary program. And in the first year we diver diverted um, 1,400 tons from the landfill, so that's awesome. Um, right now we do have the mulch available and one good use for this will be um, for a food waste composting program, which would provide a sustainable end use. So we would be able to use the mulch and combine it with the food waste once we're able to have that program up and running. Um, so challenges and opportunities. One of our issues, like I mentioned in Los Alamos, is because of where we're located, we have to haul trash so far away. And our transportation and our disposal costs increase every single year. Um, the, di the recycle market is really dynamic. It's constantly changing and evolving. And I'm sure you've heard things in the news about the China ban and the national sword and different things like that. So 
We're really fortunate in Los Alamos that we've been able to maintain our recycle program when lots of other communities have decided, you know, to, you know, suspend them momentarily or even for the long run. So, but we are constantly juggling, like figuring out new ways how we can divert materials. So we introduced the yard trimming program about a year and a half ago, and now we're looking at food waste composting because that's the next um, highest type of material that we have in our in our roll carts right now that's going out as trash. Um, so we are working on a food waste composting feasibility study that'll go out soon and tell us, you know, what is the best method for Los Alamos County. Um, we're always looking at different alternate paths for our waste stream. Like we found the glass market in um, Wheat Ridge, Colorado, and um, you know, always looking at educating and making sure our recycled material is a good quality so other places do want to buy it. Um, and we're also going to be working on a food waste prevention education program um, because did you know 40% of all the food produced in the US is thrown away? Oh my god, that breaks my heart. Um, so we're going to teach people how to store their food properly, only buy what they need, and um, teach you about expiration dates because some of those are not regulated and it makes people throw away food faster than it's actually um, spoiled. So keep, stay tuned for that. We're gonna be working really, really hard on that um, as a waste prevention initiative. Um, and then also focused on backyard composting. So for all of the inedible food, banana pills and you know eggshells and different things like that, um, we'll teach you how to do backyard composting in conjunction with PEAK um, and the Zero Waste Team and the Environmental Sustainability Board. So, um, so I mentioned all these, food is the number one item in landfills. Um, so we're gonna do our best to keep that out by educating and by composting. Um, how can you get involved? If you're interested, you wanna make a difference in the community, you're passionate about all these things, um, join our Environmental Sustainability Board. We have meetings uh, once a month and uh, we actually will have a vacancy soon. So please apply today if you're interested. And then we also have a zero waste team that's full of passionate people that are just um, groundbreaking ideas and innovative and passionate and want to change the community for the better. So if you're interested, come out and join us or email me and I'll send you more information. So this is our Environmental Sustainability Board and it's an um, advisory board to the council. So again, in our zero waste team, we held the zero waste concerts this summer and just always about educating and that's been our biz biggest success is educating our community. And um, it's, it's done wonders for our program. So thank you so much. And with that, I will end. If you, this is my contact information. If I don't answer all your questions today, or if you want to get involved, please call me or email me. And it looks like we're, we have a lot of time for questions, so I'm ready. Okay, I'm gonna try to answer all of these and not miss anybody. So let's see, let me do my best. Okay, so it says, um, China was a major purchaser of recyclable materials, about 50% of the world supply, but they stopped that last year. Is this impacting our recyclable material end use? Um, yes, absolutely. So China would buy 50% of the world's recyclable material. Um, and they said, we will only buy it if it's like practically perfect. And they're the ones that set the standard of the point, you know, 5% um, of purity that they want. So at this point, Friedman Recycling has still been purchasing our material, but because it costs so much more money to make it practically perfect, like they don't, when they ask for paper, they want it pure paper. They don't want paper with a little bit of, um, I don't know, like a plastic bottle in there that might sneak through or a can or something that shouldn't be in there. So it costs extra money to get it to that purity. And therefore our recycling cost has increased. The county used to generate revenue from recycling and now we pay um, you know, $25 per ton 
to recycle. So it is, it is expensive. So it has, um, it has changed that for us. Um, but again, we are fortunate to still be recycling and um, it's a compliment to our residents that we, our recycle rate is so low, it's 17%. And that def definitely impacts our um, commodity price. So the price that they're willing to pay for our recycled material. So it's great, good job. Um, can you recycle coffee bags which seem to have a plastic lining inside? So I would say no because that, um, it's just, I think that's a no. And maybe Sarah can speak to that a little bit more if she has a chance. Um, let's see. How about plastic without the symbol? So the only plastics I know without a symbol that are allowed are like the thick rigid plastics. Like they say like toys are made out of rigid plastic, things like that. So I would say yes, those are recyclable and they typically don't have a symbol. Um, but if they are the flimsier plastics without a symbol, then I would say no. Um, if I'm wrong, Sarah, and you have the right answer, please let me know. Um, let's All see. All right, I'm going to hop on real quick. Okay. I'm going to, so Sarah's a co-host now, and her, her screen is ready to be shared. And Helica, if you want to stop your screen share, we can get to all the rest of the questions at the end. And, um, okay. And Sarah, I'm going to invite you to share your video um, so we can say hi to you and I'll introduce you real quick. And I'll also unmute you. Hi, Sarah, so we can see you. Um, so everyone, this is Sarah Pierpont. She started her career in the recycling field as a coordinator of the Recycle Santa Fe Art Festival in 2005 and working to keep forest trimmings out of the landfills. She is currently the executive director of the New Mexico Recycling Coalition and is inspired by the less obvious benefits that recycling brings to communities, such as economic development, jobs, community building, and quality of life. She holds a degree in geology from Colorado College and a master's equivalent in geography from UCLA. And she lives in Santa Fe with her husband and daughters. Welcome. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, um, Krista and Angelica, for letting me be a part of this presentation. I really appreciate it. And, and the New Mexico Recycling Coalition, we're a statewide nonprofit. We work with members throughout the state, and we honestly use Los Alamos County oftentimes as an example of um, how to recycle right and how to divert a lot of material from the landfill. So um, kudos to all of you and to Angelica and her team for really um, putting programs in place that are accessible and usable for the community. So thank you. Um, I'll answer really quickly that you asked about the coffee bag. I believe that type of bag is sort of the same as uh, a chip bag or, you know, a potato chip bag. And so that would not belong in the recycling bin. I could be wrong as to what kind of bag you're referring to. But anyways, I wanted to talk really briefly about a uh, statewide initiative that we are doing in partnership with South Central Solid Waste Authority and the New Mexico Environment Department called Know What to Throw New Mexico. And essentially we are doing the same sort of education that Angelica was just talking to you about in Los Alamos state, uh, statewide. And we wanted to figure out messaging that was really universally true with all the different recycling programs. So the question is, you know, why do we need to recycle, right? And Helica talked about it with, with China closing its doors to the import of scrap material. Um, with any supply and demand, when you have the same amount of supply and demand goes down, well, then you have to have really, really clean quality material to be able to sell that. And so this is the case throughout the state, even before coronavirus. When I put this slide together, coronavirus had not hit yet. But what it shows is um, some superstars, um, including Los Alamos County should be on there. Um, Los Alamos, Santa Fe, Albuquerque, and Las Cruces, they are committed to keeping their recycling programs going strong. And they have, um, sometimes paid twice or even three times as much for the processing of that material to make sure it's squeaky clean so they can find a market for it. And they've done that so far without having to raise the rates for their residents. Uh, smaller communities are having a little bit of a harder time. They did not have as big of a budget cushion or system to pay for the rates. So you'll see the, the yellow and the red um, throughout the state. A lot of recycling programs are suffering. Even before coronavirus, um, Taos, Las Vegas, Torrance County, uh, Rio Doso, 
Demi, they've all really limited what they can accept. Many of them are not taking plastics anymore and a few of them are just taking aluminum cans and cardboard. And the cities of Silver City and Carlsbad completely got a, did, went away with all of their recycling. So if you're living in Carlsbad and you wanna recycle, you can't do it. You have to drive to Las Cruces. So we really wanna work hard to change that. And one way to do that is to make recycling programs efficient and more sustainable and more affordable, which is um, really educating the consumer on how to recycle right. We worked with some partners that are um, Sunny 505 Advertising. They did the Keep New Mexico True, all that tourism branding that you might see when you drive along I-25. And the key messaging is universal throughout the state. So if you live in Los Alamos or Santa Fe or Albuquerque, your material is going somewhere like Friedman Recycling, which takes a lot of um, material and it can process, you know, optically sort the different plastics out and kind of unscramble the, the commingled material. If you live somewhere like Roswell or Alamogordo or Deming, it's different. It's a, it's a drop-off recycling program and residents bring their material and what they can, what they can recycle and what is accepted may differ. So what we've decided on is our messaging is simple, you know, three simple things. Know what to throw, making sure that you take the time to be educated, just like you are, are all are doing right now, um, you know, such as styrofoam. We can't recycle styrofoam anywhere in our state. So know what to throw. The other one is empty, clean, and dry items get recycled. And that, you know, we get a lot of questions about this because people know we live in the desert. We don't want someone to spend five gallons of water washing out a peanut butter jar just to make sure that it's recyclable. Um, use your best judgment, give it a quick rinse. If you can do, give it a quick rinse and it's clean, then great, that's, that's great for, for the recycling. If not, and it's full of peanut butter or mayonnaise or something, you know, greasy pizza, then it goes in the trash. And this is important because when we talked to Morris Friedman, one of the owners of Friedman Recycling in Albuquerque, we asked him what was the single biggest issue for their contamination and they said food waste. So if, you, if someone puts, you know, old takeout food, you know, crusts and, and sandwich and, and oily stuff, french fries into the recycling bin, that small little takeout container can contaminate the entire area, the entire load. So that's why we wanted to let people know to keep it clean. Another one is loose material gets recycled. Um, loose means don't bag your recycling, no plastic wrap, like Angelica said, if you can pop your finger through it, that's plastic wrap. And also loose means no tanglers, no hoses or um, you know Christmas tree lights or all those things that might get tangled up because that's what they do when they are in the processing portion of the recycling phase. Uh, they get tangled in the equipment and they actually make the whole plant have to shut down for safety and clean out their equipment. So loose, empty, clean, dry, and know what to throw. And how we're doing that is a, it's a multi-phase approach. Um, we've added things to our website, which I'll give you at the end, but it's RecycleNewMexico.com. And it's an interactive map. This map shows you links to all of the specific recycling programs throughout the state. So this map does not exactly say, you know, what to throw in Los Alamos, but it links you to Los Alamos County's page that will tell you what to throw. Um, we have assets for recycling managers that you can download off the website. So these are just these photos, um, examples here are some photos that we are using for social media and other ones. You know, know what to throw in New Mexico. They chose an enchilada pan, which I really like because that's very um, New Mexico specific. And if it's dirty aluminum foil like that, we don't want it. If it's clean, yes, it's great for the recycling bin. Um, that video at the top there is on our website. We did a couple of advertisements um, on television and social media, and they're quick videos to talk about don't bag in your recyclables, don't bag your recyclables, and to give your items a quick rinse. These are a few of the graphics from our social media campaign, and this is all available to share for anyone throughout the state. So recycling managers such as Angelica can use it for their recycling um, social media. And, um, you know, just photos and quick little informational um, uh, taglines to go with each one. You know, recycling right is as simple as knowing what to throw. For example, don't bag your recyclables and don't throw plastic bags or wrap into the bin. Loose items get recycled. We wanna tell people what to do um, instead of just always telling them what not to do. So that's why we chose the, the loose items, clean, dry, those sort of things. Positive reinforcement. Um, we also had print ads in the journal and a few other publications, um, just kind of 
you know, bringing home that message of knowing what to throw. There's three billboards along I-25. And, um, you know, and people along I-25 are coming from everywhere throughout the state. So these are messages that are universally true. Um, do not bag recyclables. Even if you're in a tiny town like Springer, New Mexico, and you go to the drop-off center, they still don't want the bag in the recycling, just like they don't want it in Albuquerque or Los Alamos. So this is the real message that we're trying to convey. We had great plans before coronavirus to travel to rural communities and um, interact with the public about how to recycle right. Uh, and unfortunately, we're not able to do that. So we're making up for it by doing um, a few of these town hall style webinars such as this, and also getting some printed collateral material for our rural communities to be able to use. And here is the, um, here's my contact information. If anyone has any questions, uh, please let me know. And I'm happy to, um, to be a resource to anyone who wants to recycle right. Wow, so much good information. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, I can't see any of the questions anymore somehow. I have two okay. screens up. So mm -hmm. I can read through some of them. Um, Here, go ahead. Let's do all that. Right. Yeah, yeah, I can't see them. That'd be great. Please do read through them. Are items that go into the big dumpsters supposed to be bagged? Um, example, at apartment complexes? Suggestion. So, go ahead. All recycled material should be loose, even if it's in a big dumpster. Okay. Um, can, I just, can I just add something, Angelica? I, I yeah. spoke with, um, with Martha Lara. She operates the recycling center in Santa Fe, so it's not where Los Alamos is taking their material. But she said her crew is instructed if they see an opaque bag for safety and even before coronavirus, they just automatically throw it away. So if it's a black, you know, bag of recyclables, maybe it's full of aluminum cans and they see that it automatically gets tossed in the trash. Oh, wow. So yeah, opaque black. Yeah, just yeah. rule of thumb, just let it be loose. Yeah. Okay. Um, I have a kitchen waste composting barrel, but it will probably never cook. So it's just in various degrees of de <laughs> decomposing. It does have coffee grounds, eggshells, and the like. Um, any idea where it could go? So I am going to say, I don't have the answer to that question, but we are, Peak is hosting a compost summit on May 12th. So you should join us, stay tuned for that. And you will have a whole bunch of compost experts on that, on that talk. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's, there's a lot, there's a little, there's information as well on the state environment department's webpage about backyard composting. That's what they would call that. Um, I don't know if you live in an apartment or a townhome, but if you have a backyard, you, you can do a lot of food waste composting on your own in a small space. Thank you. Okay, bottle caps, bubble wrap envelopes, drinking glasses. So bottle caps need to stay on the plastic container. And if it had already been removed from the plastic container, you could just throw the lid in the trash. Um, bubble wrap, remember that can go to Smith's or any retail grocer. So any type of film, and that includes bubble wrap. And then glass, drinking glass, um, that does have to go to the trash. So we, do, we don't have a program at this time to recycle glass drinking wear. What about the bubble wrap envelopes? Bubble wrap envelopes. So those are not recyclable at this time. And yeah, those, there, are, those are belong in the trash. They're yeah. confusing because they look like it paper, but they're not. Yeah, thank you. And is there a monthly fee for yard trimmings? The yard trimming cart is free and it's um, part of your refuse fee at this point. Okay. Um, plastic pump spray bottle is marked for recycling. What about the pump that is plastic but has a metal spring inside? Ooh, good question. Do you know the answer to that, Sarah? I think if it's, I think it's the same thing like as any plastic lid. I'm assuming that metal spring is really small. So it would just be um, making sure the pump is screwed on tight. And as long as it's screwed on to the empty container, then it would go in the recycling bin. Unless it's a really big metal spring, I, I think it's fine. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. It's hard with the mixed materials, but yeah, yeah it really is. Some to practice. 
Do you still process glass for landscaping use? We do not. So now that we've been working with Coors Miller, um, it's just a really, it, we just load it all up and it's a straight shot to Coors Miller and then they process it there and turn, turn it into new bottles. So we don't have any of the glass call it any longer. Okay, any suggestions on how to stop the postman delivery of local paper? I don't know if it's still true, but I remember I would just do a return to sender and they would stop sending mail to me. Like, I don't know if that works or if anyone else has a suggestion, but. There, there used to be a, um, a website called End Junk Mail. Okay. And you could try and get on it. I don't know if it's, I haven't seen it for a couple, for a year at least. So it might be worth Googling that, but it is really hard. Like half the time what we get now, because we've done switched to paperless for everything else is just those junk mail ads. Mm -hmm. At the nature center, I had some of our volunteers go through all of our junk mail and um, submit a request to have them stop wow. delivery. And you have to go through each, you have to enter each individual um, company that delivers and it takes up to three months for them to stop mailing. <laughs> Did it work? Mostly, it some of them we have to like keep asking. <laughs> um, okay, a couple more questions and then let's see. We're getting close to closing time. Do I need to remove the bottle cap of a milk carton? Um, no. Okay. I'll just rinse it, light rinse, and leave it on. Leave it on. Okay. Um. Oh, okay, I see a good one. What about used clothing, fabric of all kinds, now that the thrift shops are closed? So gently used clothes. We do have a big brother, big sister bin at the eco station, which also has suspended um, taking material at this time. So... When that is open again, I would say bring us your used clothes as long as it's gently used. Um, in terms of other fabric, I don't have, do you have any ideas, Sarah? Well, uh, normally when you can take items to Goodwill, um, there's a lot of thrift stores, but Goodwill stores have a really intensive um, back of house recycling program. So um, some, some textiles that aren't usable or wearable anymore will still get recycled at, via Goodwill. Ooh. That's really great to know. I see another question that says where take, to take batteries at the eco station. So once you go to the eco station, they'll direct you on where to take your items. So um, we have a spot right behind the big transfer station near the reuse area for batteries. Um, There's a question about beer bottle caps. Um, they are metal. But like, but like the nails question, they're so small, they would slip through the machinery. Uh, if there's a way to, you know, put them in a giant other metal container, you could maybe take them to scrap metal. Do you guys ever deal with that in Helica? Yeah, the, yeah, they can bring them. We have a, a large scrap metal bin, mm -hmm. and that would be the better, the best thing to do because all of that's recycled as metal. Great. Can you still take paint cans for recycling to the eco center? So if they're dry and empty, you could just throw those away. But if they're, if they have a little bit of paint, um, you can bring them to the household hazardous waste area at the eco station. And currently that program suspended, but I imagine now that COVID lets up, we'll start it again. And it's on Friday and Saturday from nine to three. So any chemicals like paints or um, pool cleaners or any of those types of things. Mm -hmm. Well, I'd like to thank you for your time tonight and your wisdom in sharing some great PowerPoints with us. And I want to also thank everyone for joining us this evening to learn about safe recycling, safer recycling. And thank you very much. Thank you Thanks all. Thanks so much. Thank Have you, night. Sarah. Thank Have you. a great night and everyone stay safe. Yes, you too. Yes. Be well. Take care. Thank you.